Uh, greetings to you all. Uh, today's teaching I have entitled Equal with God. Um, the framework which I want to use is uh, actually found in Genesis, um, Genesis 1, 26, and it says, God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. The Amplified Version reads, Then God said, Let us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness nature. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. And then Genesis 5, 3, again with this same uh, uh, theme, says, uh, When Adam was 130 years old, he became the father of another son, in his likeness and image, indicating that he was like Adam and that he also bore God's image, and Adam named him Seth. Um, the complete Jewish Bible reads as, After Adam lived 130 years, he fathered a son like himself and named him Seth. So, um, the the image and the likeness, according to the Amplified Version, doesn't seem to, seems to exclude the uh, physical appearance uh, or physical likeness, but talks about a nature like uh, uh, in his nature, this uh, personality. But I don't know. Maybe it may actually be be both. But anyway, let's focus on his nature, uh, his likeness, and his and his. Um, Likeness, I think, would seem to suggest image, an image of some sort of appearance, like, and nature is another quality. Now, coming into to the word um, equal, um, its usages are equal, equality, equivalence, identical, consistent, alike, the same as much, same amount, and. Um, these these uh, the, these adjectives like unique, complete, equal, infinite, and perfect um, seem to embrace um, a mathematical absolute concept in them. You know, it's an absolute concept in them, and therefore uh, you cannot qualify them further. Like you can't say. Uh, can't qualify it by other ad adverbs such as really, quite, very, it's something is unique, it's unique. If it's complete, it's complete. Uh, although I've heard being complete, being um, put in this way, completely complete. Um, so anyway, th this is, I think this is where the, 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 the problem uh, for, for most of us, at least for me, for, for me, is that we tend to, when we see the words or read the word, the adjective as, uh, of um, equal, it seems to, it embraces a mathematical absolute um, meaning. Uh, it's absolute, and and when you apply it to to God and uh, God and the Son and uh, and the spiritual beings, I, I don't think that is quite the why I see the back of our minds, we tend to have this conception, but that is not quite it. I think it would be easier, and maybe to say like someone or the same or some something like that. But when you say complete, it's like you know. When you say equal, it seems like it suggests a math mathematical equality. But anyway, that aside, let us um, get into it now. Um, the noun, on the other hand, uh, refers is that. Refers equal refers to a person or thing that is the same as another in status or quality, and that is more like it when we use it as a noun. It just doesn't mean that it's exactly the same, exactly exactly mathematically, but it's something that is the same or um, or similar in status 
or quality. Then um, now we do. <clears throat> John seventeen five reads, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Now, we can we come into the substantive um, um, teaching. Phil Philippians uh, chapter 2, verses 6 to 8. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. Um, so I, being equal with God, I think here, I think it's being God. Uh, he, did, he did not consider it to be robbery, uh, being God um, or another way of putting it, which I will codify later, being a God. Um, but he did not um, think it a robbery for him to come down in the form of a bond servant in the likeness of man and found on earth as a man. Um, the Amplified Version reads, who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity, and I think this is the concept that we want to capture here, did not regard being God, although the Bible, the Amplified Version reads, did not regard equality with God, but I want to rephrase that and say did not um, regard being God a thing to be grasped and asserted as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it. The, the New Living um, verse, <clears throat> Version reads, Jesus has always been as God is. He's like God. He has always been as God is. But he did not hold to his rights as God, but put aside everything that belonged to him and made himself the same as a servant who is owned by someone. He became human by being born as a man. After he became a man, he gave up his important place and obeyed by dying on the cross. Now, I think the, this translation, I think, captures the whole thing. It's, it's, um, it's not talking about equality. No, it's not talking about equality. He's saying that uh, he, he did not hold on to his rights as God, and he is God. But he put everything aside for the sake of the salvation plan to come on earth and to die for it. And he became man. But for that to happen, he was as God. He could not die that way. Um, although, of course, I've... Uh, is it Psalm 82, God says that they, those other gods who are wicked are going to die like a man. Um, the Amplified Classic Translation reads, who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness and fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God or did not think being God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained, eagerly grasped or retained. And, and you will find this throughout all the, um, most of the translations. The message translation talks of, think of yourself, uh, for this uh, same scripture, think of yourselves the way Jesus Christ thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death and the worst, and the worst death, worst, worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Yeah, because a crucifixion was the, was the, a, 
the way criminals, um, he died like a criminal. That's how they executed criminals. They hanged them on the cross. But the message translation there, I think, captures this thing and we move away from the use of this word equality only because of the connotations and the mindsets that we, we tend to have this mathematical um, um, precision or absoluteness, uh, which is not what is, is being talked about here. Um, the, the Kenneth S. West um, uh, translation reads, This is the mind which is also in Christ Jesus, who has always been and at present continues to subsist in that mode of being in which he gives outward expression of his essential nature, that of absolute deity, which expression comes from and is truly representative of his inner being. Uh, that, that is of absolute deity. Um, and then he goes on, he says, but he emptied himself and made void, um, he made void, has taken the outward expression of a uh, bond, um, bond slave. So he, he put aside his deity and he humbled himself and he came to earth as a man. Um, and he died as as a, as a man. In John 5, 18, it reads, Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God, making himself like God. Uh, because if you're father and your son, you are the same substance. And uh, I think there's, um, there's oh, we'll come to something that captures this more more accurately, I think, um, this, the, it gets rid of this use of, um, he was making himself, this use of the word equal. Um, and uh, the John West, um, Kenneth West uh, translation for this particular scripture also goes on, uh, reads, and um, on this account, therefore, the Jews kept on seeking the more to kill him off, because not only was he continually breaking the Sabbath, but also because he was saying that God was his privately owned, unique father, a father in a way in which no one else had him for a father. And then he goes on to say, making himself equal with the deity or making himself God. Um, I think the, if you get rid of this thing, the, the sense is not lost, it's actually captured there. So the, I think the, the, the essential point is that Jesus was actually telling them, telling us that his father is, is well, to use the, the translation here, God was, his, was privately owned, he was a unique father, a father in a way that he was, in, in which no one else had him. And that is the thing, because he was there the baby before the foundation of the world. He was, he, he came first. Uh, everything was created through him and by him. Um, so, and in that way, there is this unique relationship. And maybe the what happened in the case of Adam and Eve, how Eve came into being, may that may be an indication. Is the uniqueness of it. Uh, how Jesus also came about, that he was like taken a part of God, uh, of God and uh, he be and and making and and and, um, and um, creating or creating or begetting someone uh, in, in another person, uh, a God who's just like him. Um, and then it goes on, it says now, we are now talking about and, um, <clears throat> this uniqueness. Um, it says, for the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. This is uh, John 5.26. John 20.17 uh, and uh, 18 reads, Jesus said to, to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to you, my, uh, my brethren, and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. So Jesus said to them again, 
peace, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. So I think this is um, the thing is um, he's ascending to his Father, who's also our Father, to his God, who's also our God, and he's our God. Um, in John 10, 28 to 29 reads, And I give eternal life, and they shall never pay. And I give them eternal life, this is Jesus talking, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of his hand. Uh, Luke 20, 36 reads, Nor can they die any more, for they are equal to the angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection now he's talking about us and what he's talking about us being equal to the angels i think the equality thing is the use of that word and its connotation or the the in our minds anyway it's, it's not the correct words we'll be like angels like angels uh, that does not necessarily say that we are equal because even paul says that we will judge angels so i think he's talking about the eternal I wouldn't want to say immortality, but uh, we will um, we 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 will continue. To, we will live forever. Yeah, we will live forever. Um, then the the expanded translation reads: In that day, they are like like angels, yeah, and cannot die. They are children of God because they have been raised from the dead. And the amplified uh, translation reads, they cannot die again because they are, which uses the word immortal, like the angels, uh, angel-like. They are children of God being participants in the resurrection. Now, uh, the, the next thing I want to touch on is that the teacher... Um, pupil servant master relationship it says a disciple is not above his teacher nor a servant above his master this is matthew 10 24 to 25 it is enough for a disciple to be like his father and a servant to be like his master but if they have called the master of the house belzebub how much more will they call those of his household? He's talking about us. But here we're talking about the teacher, that the teacher, a disciple cannot be like the teacher. It is enough for them to be, can they, they, you know, a disciple cannot be above the teacher. It is enough for us to become like the teacher or, or a servant like the master. And uh, remember now, in God's words, everybody is a, is a servant. If you listen to him, yeah, he refers to Jesus as his servant. He refers to everybody as his servant. So it is enough for us to be like him. And uh, we'll come to this in a, in a little while. Um, and then Jesus says, then in, in John six forty five, it reads, it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. So Father is a teacher, but we also know that Jesus is a teacher. Um, he, and this is in John 14, 24, it reads, He who does not... He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. Um, Matthew twenty twenty three 23 reads, And he said, You will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those who for whom it is prepared by my Father. And John seven sixteen reads, Jesus answered and said, my, doct my, my doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. So he was speaking the words of the Father. So now, now we, we have a relationship. A relationship. He's basically, he's God. 
God the Father and there's God the Son. Um, but uh, there's God the Father who comes first and then God the Son. Although they work as a team, but there's a hierarchy there. Because even we know that we say that the Lord is one. The Lord is one. And we will, will look at how we can become one with him. Now, Yesh Haya, which is Jesus, uh, testifies of Haya, his father. And it says, in Genesis 127, it says, So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Him, male and female, he created them. Um, in Luke 20, 24, he took, took the co uh, coin denarius um, and he asked them, uh, Whose image and inscription does this have? And they said, Caesar's. So he says, Give unto God what is God's and give it unto Caesar what is Caesar's. So now Col Colossians 1, 15 reads, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Now, I'll, 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 I'll elaborate on that in a, in a little while. Then uh, the expanded translation says, The Son is the image of exactly like the visible like the uh, visible representation of the invisible god he ranks higher than everything that has been made then uh, the amplified translation reads he is the exact living image the essential manifestation of the unseen god the invisible representation of the invisible the firstborn the preeminent one the sovereign and the originator of all creation. The contemporary in, uh, English uh, translated version reads, Christ is exactly like God who cannot be seen. He is the first, firstborn son superior to all creation. Mm -hmm. So we... God, Father comes first, and then we have God the Son. Um, there's, a, there's a hierarchy there, and uh, it would suggest that he became God because of God the Father. He is like God the Father, so the God the Father comes first. Now the, the question is now, was he taught by God? To be like him or who he observed, I, I, I don't, it's a very difficult question to ask, uh, to answer. But we can say that he must have been taught. This is what would be reasonable to say that. He, well, he was taught by God the Father. He was taught by God the Father. And he he's a person who was teachable and anyway. he became like him. Because we also know that there are other gods who are not like God the Father in, in nature. These are the ones in Psalm 82 whom he's reprimanding. The creed, uh, the Roman Catholic creed, um, part of it reads, uh, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. So he must have been begotten. He, he became from the Father. Um, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the father through him all things were made and uh, th th this I think captures the relationship that uh, we uh, we have God the father and God the son and the God the son is begotten of God he was not just there he, he, he I, I'm saying I, I don't know um, he, he must have um, he comes after the Father. He's begotten. He comes from the Father. He's, um, how exactly that happened, I don't know. But he, the point is that he's begotten of the Father. He's the only begotten Son. Uh, and in John 1, 18, he says, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. And the Father, him, this is John 5, 37, reads, And the Father himself, who sent me, has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. So, so no one has ever seen God, the, the Father. No one has seen him. 
Um, John 14, 7 and 9, it reads, If you had known me, you would, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. So if you know Jesus, then you know the father because he's exactly like his father. So if you, he's an exact and then is an exact image of his father. And I would want to suggest, um, because here we talk about it, that his father has got a form, so he looks like him. This is it. He is like him in nature, and he looks like him. Image and likeness, this is how I, 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 I see it. Um, and um, it goes on, Jesus said, Have you, have, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me? Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father, and how can you say, show me the Father? Romans 8, 29 reads, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of, of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So here we are talking about... Um, that we are here to be conformed into the image of his son and his son is like him so we are all the aim is that we in the kingdom we are all the same the same we uh, we have the same image we have the same nature or rather we will have the same nature um, now that is not to suggest that as humans after we've been um, con um, configured or transformed that we become gods no 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 that's why it is not so much in terms of um, uh, status as 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 in nature and um, yeah and representing him um, just by when with that you know you can look at someone and say oh this is so and so son this is so so son because it looks like his father like father like son physically and it can also be like father like son in terms of some other quality either behavior or the way they talk or the way they walk or the way they present themselves but this is the imagery that we are, we are supposed to we are, we are to have here is that we are supposed to image god all the time um, f so it goes on to say in Hebrews 12 9, uh, 12, 9 says furthermore we have had father, human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live so we are going to be corrected part of I've, I've, I've taught on this that part of um, um, Everybody who comes has to pass through the Father. He's taught by the Father, so and it and uh, and being taught also includes uh, um, uh, pain and uh, and suffering. Then uh, then Jesus in John ten thirty says, "I and the Father are one, and they may all be one as you." This is John seventeen twenty one that they may. Be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. In John um, 5, uh, five uh, verses 19 to 26 and 30, it reads, then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but that what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, or that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. I can of myself 
do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Um, in 1 Corinthians 3, 21 to 23, it reads, Therefore, let, let no one Let no one boast in uh, boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cy uh, Cephas, um, or the world, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come. All are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. So we know in Luke 20, 22, 20, 12, 20, uh, 32, it reads, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yeah, it has given us the kingdom. And he said in Luke 15, um, 31 to 32, and he said to him, Son, this is... Um, uh, the prodigal son is saying, Son, he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. So now we are found. Um, then, um, talking about the essential qualities he says now of the kingdom it says in uh, Matthew 26 39 then he went a little further fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it is possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as I will but as you will and Psalm 40 8, 40 and verse 8 reads I delight to do your will O my God and your law is within my heart. So doing the will of the Father is this is the harmony and the unity that all kingdom citizens have. Obedience and knowing, submitting to the will of the Father at all times. There, there's no democracy in heaven. There's no voting or casting of votes. Um, yeah. Although we all have our own wills, but we do the will of the Father. I'm sure there are areas where we are able to exercise our own will and um, yeah, we are free, we are at liberty to do that. But on other matters which in the purview of God's uh, purpose, uh, His will is, is the will of, of everybody in the kingdom. Uh, Psalm 143.10 reads, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land. Of uprightness and some um, 46 reads sacrifice and offering you do not desire nor have you delight in them you have given me the capacity to hear and obey your law a more valuable service than burnt offerings and sin offerings which you do not require and Hebrews 10 5 reads uh, hence when he, Christ, entered into the world. He said, Sacrifice and offerings you have not desired, but instead you have made ready a body for me to offer. And which is what he did over 2,000 years ago when he was sacrificed on the, on the cross for our sake. In, um, In John fourteen sixteen, it reads, And I will pray the Father, um, pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that you may abide with you forever. So another helper here, we are talking about the Holy Spirit. Eh? So he was a helper, so there's, there's also the, uh, the Holy Spirit who is also a helper. Um, in, in John fifteen twenty six it reads, But when the Comforter, the Helper, 
the counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby. This is the amplified classical uh, translation. Comes whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes proceeds from the Father. He Himself will testify regarding me. Um, in John fourteen thirteen and sixteen, it reads. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. And then in uh, John sixteen fifteen, he says, All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said, therefore I said that he who he will take of me, take take off mine and declare to you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit will be here preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15 um, verses 27 and 20 to 28 it reads, He, for He, that's the Father, has put all things in subjection under His uh, Christ's feet, and when he when it says all things are put in subjection under him, it is evident that he himself is accepted. He does not he who does the subjecting of all things to him. However, when everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also subject himself to the Father, who put all things under him, so that God may be all in all, be everything to everyone, supreme, the indwelling and controlling factor of life. The uh, complete um, Jewish Bible on this point, on this last um, sentence reads, um, Now, when everything has been subjected to the Son, then he will subject himself to God, who subjected everything to him, so that God may be everything in everyone. The common English version reads, then God will mean everything to everyone. The English Revised Version reads, and Christ will put will, will be put under God so that God will be the complete ruler over everything. The Philip Phillips translation reads, nevertheless, when everything created has been made obedient to God, then shall the Son acknowledge himself subject to God the Father, who gave the Son power over all things. Thus, in the end, shall God be holy and absolutely God. Then, the expanded translation reads, Then God will be the complete ruler over everything. Um, and the New King James uh, Version reads, Now, when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put things under him, that God may be all in all. So, this is uh, my understanding that um, when we talk about equal, we are talking about being like um, in nature. Uh, certainly in the case of uh, Jesus, I, I think... Um, he is, he, is, he, is, he is the exact image, both uh, physically and, uh, I think, and uh, in nature, and his nature, in, in the, his likeness, or in his image, and in his likeness. And we are being conformed into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ, who is the image and likeness of, his, of the God the Father. But um, God remains God. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And when we talk about the Father being in Jesus and Jesus being in the Father and Him being in us and us being in Him, we are talking about a unity, a purpose. We are, yeah, we have the same, we are, we are, we are in unity, we are united, we have one purpose. Um, yes, we represent the same thing. We stand for the same thing. And um, and that is the will of the Father. So and we 
we conform to that. And that's it. Um, so I would like now to do a word of introspection and meditation uh, from Revelation 10 verse 9 from the expanded translation. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll and he said to me, take the scroll and eat it, a symbol of internalizing the word and it will be bitter in your stomach because it is a message of judgment but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey because it is God's word and because it brings salvation and vindication to his people. And the benediction it comes out of Numbers um, 6 verses 22 to 27 again from the expanded translation and it reads the Lord said to Moses tell Aaron and his sons this is how you should bless the Israelites uh, the children of Israel say to, the, say to them may the Lord bless you and keep you and guard you may the Lord show his kindness uh, make his face shine upon you and have mercy on you, be gracious to you. May the Lord watch over, over you, lift his face, presence, countenance upon you, and give you peace. So Aaron and his sons will bless the Israelites with my name and put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. The complete Jewish trans, um, Bible um, translation of the last sentence is, and in this way, they are they are put in this way they are to put my name on the people of Israel so that I may bless them. Thank you and may God bless you all.